So chlorine is a non-metal. It belongs to group 7. It is having 7 electrons in its last shell and it requires one more electron to complete its octet to get the last shell noble gas electronic configuration and therefore will get stability. So with the gaining of one electron it will get a negative one charge because the gaining of one electron means the negative one and it will become a negative ion. I have used a different color so this color means it has gained one electron from some other atom and in this way has got stability and the last shell noble gas electronic configuration and I am using another atom oxygen oxygen is also a non-metal it belongs to group 6 and therefore it is having 6 electrons in its last shell because the group number tells us the number of electrons in the last shell it requires two more electron because it has six electron it requires two more electron to get eight electrons to complete its octet to get the last shell noble gas electronic configuration so it will gain two electron with the gaining of two electron it will get a negative two charge because the number of electrons an atom will gain accordingly the negative charge will appear on it so with the gain of one electron negative one with the gain of two electron negative two and in this way these these will become negative ions with the gaining of electrons so it has gained two electron i have again used different colors to show the electrons from some other atom and it has got the eight electrons in its last shell and it has completed its octet to get the last shell noble gas electronic configuration and hence has got stability. So uh, in case of showing the ionic bonding in which there is a complete transference of electron from one atom to another atom for example sodium, sodium is a metal, metal is always ready to give away its electron, sodium belongs to group one, it is having one electron in its last shell and is ready to give away its electron. Chlorine belongs to group 7. It is having 7 electrons in its last shell and it will gain 1 electron to get 8 electrons in its last shell. So with the gaining of 1 electron, it has got 8 electrons. So the dot electrons are of sodium metal, cross electrons are of non-metal chlorine and in this way chlorine has gained one electron and will get a negative one charge. Sodium with the loss of one electron will become a positive ion and when we show the ionic bonding with the loss of one electron because sodium is having just one electron in, this, in its last shell with the loss of one electron it is an empty shell. We never show the empty sh shell uh, so the second shell will be the last shell so that is how we are showing it and it will become the positive ion it will become the negative ion positive and negative ions will attract each other and such a force of attraction uh, will be the binding force between them such a binding force is the ionic bonding between them and in this way ionic bonding is formed between the sodium ion and the negative ion between the metal and the non-metal. With another example, magnesium and fluorine. Magnesium belongs to group 2. It is having two electrons in its last shell and it just like to get rid of these two electrons. Metal is always ready to give away its electron, but it would like to give away two electrons in the, which are already present in the last shell and fluorine is having seven electrons in its last shell one atom of fluorine just requires one more electron to get its octet like the last shell electronic configuration of noble gases so this fluorine would just need one electron magnesium would like to give two electrons so this will give one electron to fluorine and fluorine will gain one electron and this fluorine will also require one more electron so this electron will go with fluorine 
So after gaining electron, if you look at fluorine, there is one electron of magnesium in the fluorine and on this fluorine, there is one more electron from this magnesium. As magnesium has given away two electron, it has lost two electron, there is a positive two charge and with fluorine, it has gained one electron, it is negative one. And when magnesium has given away two electron, the last shell is empty. We never show the empty shell uh, in case of showing electrons. Therefore, the second last shell we are showing here and it is having eight electron. So magnesium has got a stable electronic configuration like the Nobel gases, the eight electrons and each fluorine has gained uh, eight electrons. Each fluorine has gained one electron and with the gaining of one electron, the total number of electron with each fluorine are uh, eight and it has also got a stable electronic configuration like the Nobel gases. With the positive and negative charges, they attract each other. That force of attraction will bind them together. Such a binding because of the complete transference of electron is called ionic bonding. And there is a loss and gain of electron. There is a loss of electron with magnesium and there is a gain of electron with fluorine. So the loss and gain of electron will give us ions and the complete transference of electron give us ions and the ions attract each other. Such a force of attraction uh, will bind them together and such a binding is the ionic bonding and it is always because of the complete transference of electron because of the metal and non-metal. Metals are always eager to give away its electron and non-metals are ambitious to gain electron. So the bonding between metal and non-metal because of the complete transference of electron is ionic bonding. Metals are ready to give away electron, non-metals are ready to gain electron. So chemically, the, according to the nature of the elements, metal and non-metal, where metals are ready to give electron and non-metals are ready to gain electron. So the ionic bonding because of the complete transference of electron is formed.